Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining the fourth session of this uh, webinar series. Uh, today's topic is going to be how to apply for a postdoc position in Australia. And what that means is if you have completed your PhD and you want to apply for a job to work here in Australia, what is it that you need to do? So that is what is going, that is what I'm going to cover in today's session. So let's get started. So this is going to be the outline for uh, today's session. So I'm going to talk about what is postdoc. So give you an explanation for those who are not very aware of this. Uh, why should you do postdoc is the next topic. And what is, how is a postdoc different in Australia or why should you do postdoc in Australia? I'll then cover a bit about statistics around postdocs and what are the eligibility criteria for you to be involved or to be apply for a postdoc position. <clears throat> then we will go on to starting the application. When you start the postdoc application, what you need to do, you have to also understand the different type of postdoc fundings that are available. So we will be looking into that. Uh, then we will be looking at into how to submit your application, how to prepare for the interview. So these are all the steps that are involved if you want to apply for a postdoc position. I will also be doing a short uh, demo till at the end to show you how you can apply for one such position. So stick around till the end. So let's start with uh, this description of what is a postdoc. So a postdoc is a temporary period of supervised research or scholarly training for individuals who have recently completed their PhD. So this is what it means by a postdoc. So it is a supervised research. So you have completed your PhD already, and now you want to continue working forward and postdoc is the natural next step after your PhD completion. The reason why I have, why I have highlighted the supervised research is you will work in under the guidance of a experienced researcher who will guide you in your postdoc. So what is the primary purpose of postdoc? So the main purpose here is to gain additional skills and experience in a specific field, making making it a stepping stone to a full-fledged academic career. So if you have to want to uh, be involved or get into the academic uh, career, then postdoc is a next, is a logical step for you. So postdoc typically work, uh, postdocs as in the person, typically work under the supervision of a senior scholar or a group of academics within a, either in a university, research institute, or in the industry. So there are different options or opportunities as to where you can do your postdoc. The duration of the postdoc can be anywhere between one to three years. And normally whenever the postdoc position or the job is advertised, it will show you how long or how many years that position is for. Postdoc is a period of intense research and academic growth. So as a postdoc person, you have to take the opportunity to extend your research and build up that additional capability working in a academic or a research uh, intensive environment. So you can continue and extend your PhD work. So this is one option. And I will also talk about <clears throat> different types of postdocs where you may have to work on a specific project for which the postdoc position has been created. Okay, so that was just a starting uh, point just to give you a flavor of what postdoc is. And I guess a lot of you have already joined the session now. And so I want to thank you all for joining. And if, if you can uh, follow me on all these different uh, social media platforms that I have that I'm active on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I also have a 
whatsapp group where all researchers uh, interact so do join that and also telegram <clears throat> all right so the next thing that i want to talk about is why should you do postdoc so there are many reasons why you can pursue postdoc after your phd so one of the <clears throat> uh, one of the reason could be you want to further extend or enhance your research skills so that is why you want to do a postdoc typically whenever students who are uh, sorry graduates after their phd want to pursue postdoc because they think that is the logical uh, step in their academic journey and this is uh, this is not wrong a lot of students lot of phd graduates will do a postdoc or in some occasions if you are very if you have a very strong research track record during your phd you may even be able to directly get into a research fellow position or a lecturer position or assistant professor position so during your phd it is also very important that you start preparing for your future career so if you want to do a postdoc or if you want to do a research uh, join as a research fellow or assistant professor you need to start building your research track record during that time and as i will tell you later in the in this session it is very important that you have some strong research publications to make your application very strong uh, another reason why you may want to pursue phd uh, pursue a postdoc is because of the because you want to build your publication and your research impact and this second point will then help you to get that academic position as an assistant professor lecturer or a research fellow so that is the second point the third is it will be a good opportunity for networking and collaboration and to build your research uh, research network because research uh, community is very small a lot of people will know each other because the research area that you we typically work on is very narrow so we know each other at least those who are uh, good and well known researchers so doing a postdoc gives you that ability to build your network further fourth point is career development so after getting your phd the next step would be either to do a postdoc or you find a job in the industry but if you have the vision to be in academia and this is what you like then postdoc is the next logical and a relatively simpler step in your academic career this leads to academic positions like i mentioned if you have completed your postdoc you have you are in a much better position to to get into academic uh, to get into an academic position at a university <clears throat> uh, postdoc also gives you the option to explore interdisciplinary fields so if you are working in a research group and there are many other researchers that some of them could be postdoc some of them could be a little bit senior uh, to you then you have the option to work in a close uh, knit research community and you have the option to explore interdisciplinary research while doing postdoc you also get a global experience what i have seen in my experience is a lot of um, a lot of phd graduates from different countries will come to australia to pursue their postdoc and that gives them that extra global experience to working in a very multicultural environment it is also a good personal growth good for your personal growth because you get to uh explore a different country you get to uh, take on that additional responsibility you are no longer a student now yeah so you are a professional you are working and you are getting paid a salary so it is the next logical step in your career advancement there is also the op op opportunity to transition to industry after you have completed postdoc and i have seen many uh, postdocs have join companies after they have completed their postdoc and another and most important reason i think is that you want to contribute to the society you have already initiated already started contributing 
when you have uh, started your PhD, but now uh, when you have finished your PhD, but now when you are doing your postdoc, you are taking it that next step further. Okay, let's see what's next. So next is why should you do postdoc in Australia? <clears throat> So you can do postdoc anywhere in the world and there are a lot of opportunities for pursuing postdoc in say in us in europe in japan korea many countries they offer postdoc positions so is there anything special is there anything unique that makes australia a good place to pursue or to do your postdoc so i would say there are many reasons like you can see here first of all australia has a large number of universities which are ranked in the top 100 or top 200 globally so if you are in one of those universities in australia you have a really good uh, you you have a really good uh, uh, thing in your cv that you can show that you have worked in this best university in the world uh, there are diverse research opportunities because within australia given its specific geography it is the ideal location for pursuing certain kind of research. For example, if you are into astronomy or uh, astrophysics, then Australia is probably or South Africa is probably a very good country for you to do your research because the square kilometer array, which is the biggest telescope which is being built in the world is in Australia. So being here and working on that kind of research, Australia becomes a very relevant place for your research. Uh, next is competitive funding and grants. There is an opportunity or op, uh, op, opportunity for you to apply for competitive funding and grants while you are doing your postdoc and you will be part of a team that is applying for such grants. You also have the option to in, engage in collaborative research within the community either australia or asia but you have the opportunity because of the time zone that you can connect and you can collaborate with people in these countries next is the quality of life in australia is very amazing and you can see that many of the cities in australia are ranked as the best and the most livable cities in the world so for example melbourne perth these are the country these are the cities that are often listed in the top five or top 10 most livable cities in the world. So you are coming to a country which is a very nice country. <clears throat> Next, uh, there is career development opportunities because in Australia specifically universities offer guidance and mentorship to, uh, to postdocs to help build their career in those early stages of their career. Another reason why uh, a lot of uh, PhDs are coming to Australia to pursue their postdoc is because they can get into permanent, they can get permanent residency in Australia through, through the, uh, through, through getting their postdoc. Uh, plus there is a lot of demand for skilled workforce in Australia and then there is a lot of job opportunities for various different types of skills so if your research is in a specific skilled area then you will you will find it very easy to find a suitable job after you have completed your post okay now let's look at some of the statistics so when i searched for this information i found that in australia 40 percent of phd graduates are from foreign countries so when they come here and do their PhD, they are uh, 40 or more percent are from overseas, which is significantly higher than the 25 percent average across OECD countries. So this, what does this reflect is that it reflects Australia's open migration policy, which is aimed at attracting highly educated individuals. So there are scholarships for doing PhD for uh, when, you're, when you want to pursue your PhD or equivalently there are a large number of postdoctoral positions available as well 
but one interesting thing that i found was of all the of one of the study that was undertaken where 280 284 postdocs uh, were interviewed they what they found was that majority of postdocs are in the stem fields so science technology engineering uh, medicine and mathematics these fields are where most postdoc opportunities uh, or most postdocs were there in australia and their age range is in the early 30s so that's when they are coming to australia and pursuing their postdoc and within the 10 years post phd so not too much or not too less uh, after in that age age bracket now let's talk about eligibility for postdoc so the minimum eligibility for pursuing a postdoc is that you have to have a phd yeah so if you do not have a phd you will not be qualified to uh, apply for a postdoc position uh, or the other option is when you are applying for your postdoc if you are nearly finishing your phd yeah which, which means either you have completed writing your thesis and your thesis is in the proofreading stage or it has been submitted for examination or you have submitted the for thesis for examination and you have received some positive comments from the examiners and you are fixing them so those are those options would be suitable or could be considered as eligible but in the end when you start your postdoc you have to be a phd holder another thing is you need a strong research background including publications and conference presentations in top in top q1 journals so one thing that sets you apart from the others is how many research publications in q1 journal you have during your phd so what i suggest to my scholars is that try to publish regularly during your phd program so as a phd candidate your job is not only to complete your phd but also looking forward in the future that if you want to get a job in academia you need to have publications and the more publications you have in high quality journals the better because it will position you very well in when you are applying for a postdoc position or if you are applying directly for a assistant professor position so keep that in mind publications matter a lot in your <clears throat> in your job application for postdoc and if you have other other than publications what is it that you could do so if you have done a lot of media where your research has been showcased on tv radio newspaper or any such other media outlet that is also equally important because it shows the impact of your research so publications media and also you should have a strong professional online presence so if you do not have a linkedin account or if you do not have a blog or a personal web page then i think it is something that you should do now because when someone is looking at your job application first thing that they are going to do is to search your name what you can do now is take a break pause this video and look at or search what happens when you search your name what information are you getting and if you're not getting anything uh, reasonably good this is the time for you to start building your online brand so it could be a page on linkedin it could be a blog article it could be uh, what else could you do it could be some videos maybe you know on on youtube just about your research every paper that you have published you can make a video about it so this way you are going to be uh, set apart from the rest of the competition so keep that in mind it is very important another thing that you can also do depending upon uh, your phd and your progress in your phd you could consider publishing a small book or even a full full book that is also fine but a small book like a springer brief is something that is reasonably easy to be completed during your phd so if you have finished your thesis and while it is being examined you can talk to your supervisor and say that i would like to convert my thesis into a book 
and maybe a, a Springer brief. So that will be also another thing that will set you apart from the others in the crowd. Uh, I also wanted to show you that I have developed a online course for writing a systematic literature review paper. So if you do not have a Q1 journal when you are applying for a postdoc, it may be a good idea to publish a Q1 journal, one or more. One is, I guess one would not be uh, sufficient, two or, two or three would be ideal. And if you need guidance, then this course you can find. The link is in the description of this video. Let's, the next step now is to search for postdoc positions. So if you're looking for postdoc positions in Australia, you have to go on to this website, seek.com.au. All the jobs that are advertised in Australia will be advertised on this website. This is the most popular job website in Australia. So other than that, you can always find jobs on the university pages, university web pages because every university will have a jobs or a careers page, which you can go and check. But having said that, universities will still advertise their jobs on the Seek website. So uh, check, check that for sure. And next is networking. When you're applying for postdoc, you have to think in advance. So when you are doing your PhD and when you are attending a conference as a PhD scholar, that is the time you should start networking with professors in your discipline. And when you attend a good and top ranked conference in your field, you will find everyone in your field who is attending that. That is a more important step when you want to consider applying postdoc, because when you have met someone or when a professor has met you and then they see your application come through, there is always a positive, uh, it, it always adds value to your application because you are not a nobody. They have met you even before you have applied for this job. So it makes it much easier. Uh, and you also get, say, I would say like a positive uh, support from the professors who are on the, on the evaluation panel for such postdoc positions. So, Try to network as much as possible during your PhD so that when you are ready and applying for a postdoc, you people know you, you are not somebody completely new, you know, so keep that in mind and be a little more strategic on this. Don't leave it till the last minute that, okay, I have finished my PhD. Now let me start looking for a postdoc position that. Uh, that will not be the ideal way and that is not what I would recommend. So I would say that start networking from day one of your PhD. And if you check out my YouTube uh, videos, there are a lot of videos that I have talked about, about all these things. What is it that you can do during the first year of your PhD, second year of your PhD, third year of your PhD and so on. So check those videos because they will guide you on structuring your PhD so that you are set for getting the job at the end of it. <clears throat> Next is to start the PhD application, sorry, postdoc application. So I've searched here, if you can see, this is the Seek website and I just searched postdoctoral as the search criteria. I searched and then there are many jobs that are listed here. So what I will be doing later is I'll, I'll walk you through this job that is advertised here. And then we will see what is it that they are requesting during uh, for the PhD, uh, for the postdoc position. So you can always check the website is seek.com.au. So when you start your application, you have to have a few things that, that every postdoc position advertised on the website would require. One of that is research proposal. You should prepare a brief research proposal outlining your research plan and try to align this research 
with the institution or the university's research goals. You know, so you need to do some background research first that you so that you know what is the research expertise that they have and where you can contribute. And on some occasions on the advertised position, they would say that this postdoc will work on this and this project. So if you, they have already given you the project description for which this particular position is advertised, then try and see or align all your achievements, all your capabilities around that job. So that way you are doing the mapping and the evaluation or the uh, selection panel will, 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 you will make it easier for them to assess your application because you can say that you are uh, the best suited candidate for this position because these are all the uh, criteria that you have listed for the project and this is your your experience on your experience on those along those criteria so you are making their job easier by doing that kind of a proposal <clears throat> I did a webinar on research proposal, how to draft a research proposal on the 2nd of March. So if you are not sure how to write a research proposal, do check that video. Next is you need to have a strong CV. The CV should not be very long, you know, and on many occasions, the job advertised job will mention how many pages your CV should be. So stick to that page limits. And I'm going to do another webinar on that topic in the future. So keep an eye out for that too. Okay. The next thing you need to do is to write a strong cover letter and a cover letter that kind of aligns or shows how you, your research or how your experience is aligned with the job that has been advertised. So you, you may have to do one cover letter for each job that you want to apply because the requirements for different jobs will be maybe different. So don't try and recycle the same cover letter for all your job applications. You need to spend time to make a to do a proper job in writing the cover letter. And and one one suggestion I would do uh, uh, give you is do not copy paste. Because whenever you do a copy paste, you will you will forget something, and this mistake happens many times. Especially when I review, <clears throat> uh, when I am on a selection panel, or when I am receiving emails from potential uh, postdoc, PhD uh, graduates looking for a postdoc, they will have a standard <clears throat> email that they have copied and pasted, and they would change some stuff here and there, and sometimes they forget to change the name. And I receive an email from from this uh, whoever sending this, and it is addressed to a wrong person. So, and this happens. I've seen it a lot. So, don't make that mistake. It gives a very bad impression about your work ethic. Okay. So, whenever you're writing a cover letter, start from scratch. Next thing you would need is a, a reference letter. So. Try to get two or three reference letters for your uh, from from your previous supervisors or uh, colleagues with whom sorry your supervisors or whoever you have worked with in the past your professors and so on because that will matter a lot in many uh, interviews or in many uh, job applications one of the selection criteria or assessment criteria is how have the referees ranked you on a scale of one to 10. So something on, on those lines. So if you are ranked well and all the two or three referees have given you a similar and a strong recommendation, it counts a lot towards your chance of getting the position. Next point I want to talk about is understanding the funding. <clears throat> so there are two types of postdoc positions. One is project grants and another is fellowships. 
So what is the difference between these two? Let's look into it. So a project grant is a funding that is attached to a specific project. And this happens when say a research team or a research center in the university applies for funding from the government. They receive funding on a specific project. And within that funding, that particular uh, grant application would mention that we would be hiring two or three postdocs, three or four PhD scholars to work on this research project. So for such projects, you need, you do not have the liberty to choose what research you will do because the research has already been planned and you are there to execute that plan. So in this case, the uh, project grants, uh, this one, the you have limited flexibility on what research you can do. So you have to do what you have been asked to as per the project plan. The second option is a fellowship, again, a postdoc only, but here you have the freedom to choose your research topic because such positions are not tied to a specific project. So you have the flexibility to continue with your research that you are doing in your PhD and progress it further. So that is a, those are the differences that you should be aware of. So when you are looking or applying for a position or a job, do check these two things. What kind of a postdoc position is it? Is it an open position, which means where you can work on a topic of your interest? Or is it related, connected with a project that has been funded by the government or any other funding agency? <clears throat> Next point is submitting your application. So when you are ready with all the documents that I mentioned uh, earlier, that is the research proposal, your CV, recommendation letters and so on, you have to submit your application online. Most universities in Australia have a online uh, website where you can submit, submit these applications. So either it could be on the university website itself, or it could be on a, on a website such as seek.com.au where you can submit your application as well. So keep that in mind that when you are ready with your application, make sure that you submit it on time yeah keep a record of your deadlines whenever the application is due and here one important thing to remember is the time zone you know check the time zone and don't keep the submission of your application on the till the last minute yeah maybe just submit it one or two days before and there is also some benefit of doing it for example if you submit earlier on when nobody else has submitted, your application has come up. It may even go to the selection panel. They may have time to look at your application before other applications. And they kind of make some informal assessment already, thinking that maybe your application is uh, good. You are a strong candidate. You have your application ready. You have submitted it ahead of time. So it shows a lot of things about your uh, about your personality, about your work ethic. So yeah, keep that in mind. And if it is late, no point submitting and no point asking for an extension. I, I would not recommend it, but it is your choice. If you, if you are missed for some genuine reason, uh, then you can, you can make a request. But if you have known about this uh, position for a long time and you're still not submitting it on time, then I think it is just not right. Next thing is prepare for your interview. So imagining, assuming that uh, you have been shortlisted for this position, you will receive a letter or an email from the university or whoever has advertised this position. And they will ask for a, uh, give you a few slots to choose from in which time they will interview you. Sometimes the interviews may be uh, online especially if you are not in Australia or even if you're in Australia, you may be in a different city. So most likely the first interview is like going to be an online interview. So you need to prepare for this interview very thoroughly, you know, 
because this is an opportunity for you to present your capability your strengths your research skills to the selection panel and anything can go wrong in an online environment right so maybe the internet can go down or the voice is not going clearly or anything could go wrong so have some backup you know in case something goes wrong if your wi-fi goes wrong goes down you should have your mobile hotspot ready to continue the call i'm going to do a special uh, ex detailed video on that topic as well so keep an eye out for that and the next thing is that you have to do a mock interview before the actual interview so ask your um, ask your phd supervisor or anyone who can help you your mentor to guide you uh, to do a mock interview let them ask you questions and you answer these questions and when you're answering these questions record yourself and listen after the mock interview has finished and analyze that to see whether and where you can improve so that when you're doing the real interview you already have that <coughs> uh, already have that confidence Uh, once the interview is complete the next step is to accept the offer so what may happen in this case is this is a this takes some time right you you submit your application first before the deadline and once the deadline has passed the selection committee will gather and assess all the applications firstly they individually they will assess and then they will come together as a committee, as a panel, to get a consensus among themselves as to uh, who should they shortlist for interview. So once that is done, they will send out an email to the shortlisted candidates that you have been shortlisted and required for uh, to appear in an interview. So this all takes some time. And as an applicant, when you have submitted a, for a, a position, you are very eager to uh, to know what has happened with your application why you're not getting the uh, response on time why they have not emailed you you may be anxious there is a lot of anxiety this is your first first job and so on so uh, if you are really very uh, curious as to the status of your application then it may be a good idea for you to uh, send a follow up email asking them uh, what, what happened with your application <clears throat> uh, once that is done, if you have sent a, a follow-up email uh, and it not only shows that you are interested in the job, I mean, the follow-up emails can be, on, can be done uh, on two times. One is you have submitted the application and you haven't heard from them yet. Then you can send up an email saying that uh, how is the progress of the application. Uh, and the second is after the interview. So you have submitted the interview, you have completed the interview and you are now uh, waiting to hear uh, hear from them what is the status so you can send up a follow up uh, email on that occasion but don't do too many okay and after that the next step would be that you get an offer letter from the university and uh, it, it will set out it will explain the uh, conditions of your uh, employment the start date the duration of the contract and any other additional terms of the employment. So read through that carefully and only then sign it. If you're not clear about one or uh, some of the conditions that are listed in the contract, you can always ask them for clarification. Okay, so these were all the uh, steps, like starting from <clears throat> uh, what is postdoc to eligibility to searching positions and so on and so forth. Now what I'm going to do is to uh, walk you through a live demo of an, ex of an application uh, for the 
job that I just now uh, told you. So this is the position that is This is the vice chancellor's research fellow position. It is uh, advertised in the, uh, okay, sorry. I will start from here. I will take you to, I will show you the SEEK uh, website. So this is the seek.com.au website. So here, if you can, if you search, <clears throat> postdoctoral position, and search seek. Uh, you can see here there are many positions like vice chancellor's research fellow at University of Wollongong, postdoctoral research in uh, University of Tasmania. And now here it is. You can see it is not a university, but it is a research institute, Bestos Disease Research Institute, University of Southern Queensland. Uh, and so on and so forth. And here you can also see the salaries that they have advertised. They, for example, here the salary is in the range of $75,000 to $100,000 plus 17% of superannuation. The superannuation is the uh, money that the government pays towards your retirement. So that is your complete uh, package. So we can uh, go through, uh, so this one is actually a research fellow position. So I will not go through this one, but I will walk you through, uh, let's say, let, let's check, just check this one, postdoctoral research fellow. So this is in the University of Southern Queensland. Uh, it is in Brisbane city in Queensland state. Uh, it is posted 16 hours ago, so it is a very, uh, very recently uh, advertised position. So what does this position talk about? Let's read through it. The academic transformation portfolio is dedicated to advancing research excellence and innovation. We are excited to announce an opportunity for a postdoc research fellow to lead an evaluation of a groundbreaking project focused on veterans transition from defense to the cyber security industry. This project in collaboration with DXC Technology and University of Southern Queensland aims to evaluate the crucial issues faced by veterans during their transition to civilian life particularly in the context of the burgeoning cyber security sector. So here, if you see, this is a project that has already been funded and they are looking for somebody to work on this. So the project aim is here. You can see it very clearly. The aim is to evaluate the crucial issues faced by veterans. So this one. The evaluation project also investigates the challenges experienced by spouses when deployment disrupts their professional development. So these are the two things that the postdoc would be required to research. <clears throat> to be considered for this role, you must have graduated within the last five years and been awarded a doctoral qualification from UN University of Southern Queensland. This position is based either at either our Toowoomba or Springfield campus. So this is a very specific uh, situation because they they are go only going to offer it to somebody who has completed their doctoral from this university. But this is not always the case. But this happens to be the case in this in this in this job. Uh, consideration will be given for ten month full time, twelve month point eight FTE, which means eighty percent workload, or eighteen months half. Uh, 0.5 FTE, which means a 50% workload. <clears throat> what will you do? So this is your job description or job role. You will lead the evaluation of veterans transition from defense to cybersecurity industry. 
you will investigate the important issues surrounding veteran transitions and challenges faced by spouses produce high quality research outputs see this is important here you have to produce high quality research output aligned with national priority areas and university research strengths so both the things you have to be um, involved in uh, engage in externally funded research projects and secure additional funding where necessary so see remember i told you earlier on that you have the opportunity to be part of a team to secure additional funding so this is very clearly mentioned here another thing you have to do is participate in impactful engagement and services to promote the project's findings and foster collaboration which means you do this research here you publish here and then you need to show the impact again i mentioned earlier on in the session today that impact of your research is very important so how you are going to show the impact is uh, also what you would be required to do what will you need phd or an equivalent degree in a relevant field or any other discipline with evaluation experience demonstrated ability to conduct independent research and lead projects so how do you demonstrate independent research when you have done a phd it is considered to be independent research that you have done excellent communication skills and ability to engage with diverse stakeholders so you have to have good people skills so that you can connect with people talk to them and track record of scholarly and professional activities relevant to the discipline so maybe you worked in this industry before in cyber security or in defense and that becomes a added advantage what we provide so this is what the university will offer you for this position so they will offer a competitive salary opportunity for you to work on cutting edge projects with with real world impact collaboration with leading industry and academic partners and access to resources required for for you to uh, do this job if you have uh, if you have any further questions you can contact you can reach out to this email and ask them for any further questions <clears throat> what else do they have uh, for more information on how to apply for a job please refer to the application process available on our website so let's click this and it takes us to a 404 page which is not really a good example so let's see if there is anything else here is not here. okay let's take another example Uh, let's check this one again which we were starting to work on so here also they have a similar uh, information as we to begin with okay if you see here it lists what all information do you need to submit with your application so you need to have a project proposal which is four pages plus references so the proposal itself is four pages plus any additional pages for references your curriculum uh, vitae which is maximum four pages yeah like i mentioned that many universities will give a limit on how much how long your cv should be plus a list of publications which is separately attached a university of wollongong mentor report from your university of wollongong mentor on the pro forma provider so there is a template that they have provided with which you have to fill this up and what this also means is that you need to first find a mentor from this university uh, external referees uh, report from a referee external to uh, uow on the pro forma provided so this one you would have to send it to your referees to your whoever is going to give you the recommendation letter and ask them to submit it and there is another condition on confirmation of aboriginality if it is applicable uh, the closing date is april 30th so there is two months time roughly from from now 
to apply for this position and when you're ready to apply you can click on this uh, apply button and then you submit all these all these documents that are listed here okay so that was the uh, a, a simple uh, sample walkthrough of a couple of applications on what what they are looking for when you are uh, when they are looking for a, a postdoc position okay i'll go back to my slide deck uh, so some tips and tricks for uh, successfully applying for your postdoc positions. So when you are thinking of applying for a postdoc, uh, don't limit it to a few countries. You can apply to universities around the world. You know, look at the, my suggestion would be to look for the top universities that are ranked in the top 100 or 200 globally and choose from those universities. Uh, next is look for universities that have uh, that are well known for your research area you know some some universities are good for engineering some are good for medicine and so on so find those universities that are good for uh, your good that are good for your field <clears throat> Okay, uh, there is a question here. Uh, let me take this question. Uh, what is the question? Do Indian PhD holders have teaching or research opportunities in Australia post doing a postdoc from an Australian university? Yeah, uh, to answer this, yes, definitely. Uh, so what I would suggest is when you are uh, applying, when you are doing a postdoc at an Australian university, take that two or three years as the time to build up your academic profile so that you become competitive when you're applying for a job after your postdoc. And a lot of uh, candidates who are doing or pursuing their postdoc, that is one of their important uh, objectives that they would, uh, that they would, uh, they would spend this time to prepare their academic uh, profile very strong so like i showed you in the job uh, listing just now that you, you as part of the postdoc you would be required to publish in top quality journals so once you do that over that three year uh, time frame your academic profile will become very strong and it will be much easier for you to find a academic position after your postdoc is complete so definitely the answer to answer that it is a is yes I have another question from Astin Luciana, a student of Mrs. Maya Devi. I'm happy to be part of this webinar. So thanks, uh, Astin. Uh, it was great for me to meet uh, Mrs. Uh, Maya Devi when I recently uh, visited Indonesia for a conference to deliver a keynote. So yeah, thanks. And uh, do share this webinar series with others so can, others also can learn from these uh, sessions that I'm conducting. <clears throat> okay, next is um, take uh, all the opportunity that you can get during your uh, postdoc to network and engage with more people. And to, uh, again, to answer or to connect this point with uh, the question asked by Amartya is if you network and engage with the community, your research community, after you have finished postdoc, that will again be valuable and useful uh, for you to be uh, to get that next job or next position. Uh, when you are preparing for your interviews, prepare them thoroughly, thoroughly and very, very in detail so that you perform very nicely and you get that uh, postdoc position that you are looking for. Our next is align your research goals to the job that has been advertised. I showed you a few examples just now, 
where they have already shown that this is the research that we need you to conduct in such a situation your uh, your job has to be to show how you are capable of doing or achieving those objectives those job objectives because of your skills that you have uh seek mentorship during your uh, <clears throat> during your postdoc and use that as an opportunity opportunity to build for your future job after your postdoc so like i said when you are in your phd you prepare for your postdoc when you are in the postdoc you prepare for your uh, the job after you finish your postdoc so every stage of your uh, research uh, journey is a stepping stone for the next uh, job next uh, career move uh, always stay informed and at every opportunity enhance your skill sets so whenever you get to learn something new be proactive learn as many new things as possible because we live in a world where things are rapidly changing and the skills that you have now may be obsolete in the next 3 or 5 years so always stay on top of new technologies new uh, learnings and keep yourself up to date publish your work in top journal i cannot stress that any more that this is <clears throat> the most important aspect in academic that you publish in top journals and you are known in your research community as a well known researcher a uh, consider geographic flexibility i already mentioned that don't just limit yourself to one or two countries you can find job opportunities around the world in this in this day and age or uh, develop a professional online presence i mentioned that as well during the session because whenever you apply for a job people are going to search you look at your profile so let them read what you want them to read so present yourself professionally with all the information that you need them to know put it in a way that they can easily uh, find and next is a follow up uh, on um, any uh, uh, engagements that you have so if you have uh, completed uh, given an interview ask them how is the interview progressed when when can you expect uh, a response uh, on the or the outcome of the interview and so on so these were some of the tips and tricks that you can and you should uh, follow when you are applying for the uh, for postdocs okay so that kind of brings uh, us to the end of today's session uh, and i guess you would have uh, found this uh, session informative if you have any uh, further questions that come to you uh, after the session or if you are watching this video not live but later on please uh, leave any comments uh, please leave comments so that i can answer uh, and get back to you on any uh, queries or questions that you may have okay uh, tomorrow's talk is going to be on how to read a journal paper fast yeah so given uh, this would be suitable for phd scholars as well as for postdocs so keep uh, do join this session it will be a very interesting session because i have got some really interesting things to share in this and uh, yeah i will look forward to seeing you tomorrow okay i have a message here i am dr satya i couldn't join in time so missed most of the things can i contact you for more guidance oh yes yeah, satya this video will be online on my youtube channel so please uh, check this uh, check my youtube channel Uh, subscribe to it so that you don't miss out on any future uh, sessions that I'm going to do. And I'm going to run uh, daily sessions, like I said earlier. Every day there will be a new topic and a new uh, new session. And the, my objective there is to kind of share my experience, share my knowledge, and help uh, the upcoming and budding researchers to succeed. All right, that's all for today. It's an hour already, and I need. I'll see you tomorrow in the next session. Take care and have a good day. Bye bye.